Welcome to the New American Colleges and Universities College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Elizabeth and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can type in the Q&A button on your screen to ask questions uh, of our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, uh, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash NACU. I'd now like to turn it over to Michelle, who will give an introduction for the Nat New American Colleges and Universities. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Now, I'm Michelle Apuzio. I work with the New American Colleges and Universities. And I wanna thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, you might be wondering what our campuses have in common. They all combine liberal arts, professional preparation, and civic engagement. But why are these three things important? And why would you wanna combine them? Well, professional preparation is probably the easiest thing to understand. Many people go to college because they wanna be prepared for a career. So students at NACU campuses connect the classroom to the real world through coursework, internships, and in other ways so that they graduate with the skills and experience needed for their chosen professions. But the reality is that the job market changes pretty rapidly. And the most successful people are able to adapt to these changes if they have a strong foundation in skills such as reading, writing, problem solving, and critical thinking, things that apply to many different jobs. Liberal arts courses help you to build these skills. Lastly, civic engagement on our campuses helps students achieve a sense of fulfillment by applying their skills to help others to find so, or to find solutions to issues that we find in everyday society. So those are the things that bind all of our campuses together and their similarities. However, each campus is very different and has their own unique story to tell. So I will turn it over to Amanda at Chatham to get us started. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, so um, good evening, everyone. I wanna thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Amanda Barwise and I am the Director of Undergraduate Admissions here at Chatham University. Um, I'm just gonna share a couple things about Chatham, some things that distinguish us and tell you a little bit about who we are and our character. So Chatham University is located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, for those of you that don't know, that is on the western side of the state. Um, Pittsburgh itself is a pretty wonderful city to be in. Um, we were voted one of the top 15 best college towns by Best College Reviews. And we have a ton of amazing museums, restaurants, um, and activities that students get to participate in. One of the nice things about being a Chatham student is that just by having a college ID with us, you get free access to the public transit in Pittsburgh, as well as free or discounted access to a lot of the museums and exhibits that are available in the city. So a lot of great opportunities for students to take advantage of our campus, as well as the city at large. Now Chatham actually has three campuses. Our main campus is our Shadyside campus, and that is located in the Shadyside neighborhood in Pittsburgh. Shadyside is our oldest campus and houses most of our academic programs. But we also have our Eastside campus that's located about a mile down the road that houses primarily our health sciences programs, as well as our interior architecture program. Lastly is our Eden Hall campus, which is one of our newest campuses. This is located about 40 minutes north of Shadyside in Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. Eden Hall houses our Falk School of Sustainability and Food Studies. So Chatham is actually really proud to be at the forefront of sustainability and environmental studies. Um, we were recently voted one of the greenest campuses in the United States, which we're incredibly proud of. And a lot of that work, a lot of that research takes place at our Eden Hall campus, where our students are not only learning about this in the classroom, but able to engage in it with hands-on research through our high tunnel, our garden and farm, um, our aquaculture lab. So lots of great opportunities for students to live and learn out their academic study up at Eden Hall campus. 
As far as our student population, we are a small university slash large college with about 2,400 students. That includes undergraduate and graduate students. But as you can see, our students come from all over the country. Um, we're obviously really proud that a lot of our students come from Pennsylvania. They come from our backyard, but almost 30% come from out of state. We're also really proud that about 22% of our students identify as first generation and about 14% identify as African American, Latina, and Native American. So we really seek to foster a campus community that represents the global community. As far as academics go, as a liberal arts university, we have over 40 majors that students can choose from, from biology to psychology to international relations, all the way through to some of our new programs. We recognize that a liberal arts education, and we believe that a liberal arts education is one of the best forms of preparation that you can have. And we are continually building on and adjusting our academic offerings to meet the demands of the workforce after graduation. Some of our newest programs include immersive media, which marries computer studies with design, as well as our applied data science analytics program. We also believe in giving students a platform to make the most of their education. So we have a wide variety of integrated degree programs. These allow our students to pursue both a bachelor's and a master's degree in a condensed period of time, therefore allowing students to potentially save a little bit of money, but also really make the most of their time at Chatham and make the most of their academic experience. Some of the most popular of our integrated degree programs include our Master of Physicians assistant studies program, as well as our pathways to nursing program that allows students to get their RN and BSN over the course of their time at Chatham. Outside of classes and outside of study, um, about 40% of our students under typical years will study abroad. Obviously with COVID, things have been quite different, but we believe in this so much that we actually give students $1,200 to study abroad um, because we wanna make sure that it's as financially feasible as possible because we really believe in the value of that experience. Outside of classes, our students are very involved in athletics. We have D3 athletics, including the sports that you see listed here, as well as squash, which is not part of our D3 program, but is another great option for students to pursue. As far as the application process, we try to make it as simple as possible. At minimum, we're looking to see your application and your transcripts. We are test optional, so if you would like to send us your SAT or ACT, you are welcome to, but you are absolutely not required to. We wanna to get to know you as a person. We wanna understand how you might contribute to our community and how you might grow from our community. So we welcome essays and letters of recommendation, even though they aren't required. Lastly, we offer lots of great merit scholarships as well as financial aid. I would encourage everyone, whether you're looking at Chatham or any of the other schools that are here tonight to file that FAFSA, that's gonna be important for all of us. With that, I will conclude my presentation um, and invite you to reach out with any other questions. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, Amanda. And now I'll turn it over to Janet Hamlin University. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Jen Olson Kringle, and I serve as the Director of Undergraduate Admission here at Hamlin University in St. Paul, Minnesota. Hamlin is located in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis, St. Paul, and we're in the southern half of the state of Minnesota. We're a private liberal arts university in an urban setting and we enroll just under 2000 undergraduate students. Our students represent 37 states and 42 countries. Each fall we enroll a new class of first year students of around 450 to 475. And you'll see there that our overall student body includes about 42% of students who are first in their family to pursue a bachelor's degree and about 39% of students are identify as domestic students of color. As with all the colleges you're learning about this evening, um, our class sizes are small. So most classes are taught in a discussion-based style, not ne necessarily lecture-based. 
And with those small class sizes, our students really do get to know their faculty members and are able to build strong connections. The student to faculty ratio here at Hamlin is about 13 to one, where you'll find that our faculty are really getting to know their students and working with them to help them find success. We're a division three institution. Uh, we offer 20 varsity athletic teams and we compete with other small liberal arts colleges in Minnesota, in the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. So there are four key characteristics that I'd like to share with you uh, about Hamlin University this evening. Um, first is Hamlin's commitment to social justice and civic responsibility. With our location in an urban setting in Minnesota's capital city, we offer lots of opportunities for students to be engaged members of society. This includes engagement with our local surrounding communities in service work and advocacy, as well as activities such as voting. In 2018, Hamlin had the overall highest undergraduate voting rate at a private four-year institution. The Wesley Center for Spirituality, Service and Social Justice provides support for this initiative, as well as all of our service and outreach uh, activities. Another characteristic that's really important to us is to be a diverse and inclusive learning environment. This work is supported um, by our president, by our Office of Inclusive Excellence, and our Hedgeman Center for Student Diversity Initiatives and Programs. Through programs and educational offerings and engagement between faculty and students and staff, we find opportunities to embrace and cultivate inclusivity, to uphold equity, uh, and to embrace diversity. An example of this work is from just this past year when a civility statement was drafted by members of our community, including faculty, students, and staff which really guides our campus as we engage in difficult but necessary conversations that encourage us to reflect on our own attitudes and behaviors as we work to build a more just society. Third, you'll find that Hamlin is really focused on a holistic learning environment. So through our flexible curriculum, which is called the Hamlin Plan, students explore classes all across areas of study while learning the skills, knowledge, and abilities necessary for success in today's competitive job market. In addition, the small class sizes, as I talked about before, offer many opportunities to engage in collaborative research with faculty or student colleagues. We have a great summer research program, which provides students with opportunities to engage in full-time research, offering options for stipend uh, and the option to live on campus, which really allows students to focus on their research in lieu of perhaps other student employment. And finally, Hamlin is really focused on that hands-on experiential learning uh, experience. Our faculty are committed to supporting students as they be really become practitioners in their chosen field of study. All students are required to top off their degree with a semester long experiential learning component. This might look like an internship, this might be a, a study abroad opportunity, uh, it might be student teaching or it might be undergraduate research. These are all elements that fulfill this requirement. And our location in the Twin Cities allows students ample opportunities to expand their knowledge and experience in professional settings. Our students are also very diverse in their interests. You'll see here a quick look at over 50 areas of study. Some of our more popular majors include business, biology, criminology and criminal justice, legal studies, education, and psychology. And just this past year, we started a new program in forensic psychology. Finally, I wanted to share just a little bit of information about financial aid and scholarships. Here you will see our cost of attendance, as well as the average financial aid package for students with financial need. Over 90% of Hamlin undergraduates will receive some sort of Hamlin gift aid. Here you'll see a listing of all of the merit scholarships that are available, uh, as well as some additional talent-based scholarships uh, that are departmentally based. Hamlin accepts both the common application as well as our own institutional application, and both are available on our website. Finally, we are test optional, uh, which means uh, you don't need to submit a test if you uh, wish not to. Test scores are not required for either the admission process nor for scholarship consideration. 
Please know also that we're committed to working with students and families to try to help Hamlin become an affordable option for those who uh, really feel that we are a strong fit. So I hope this has been a helpful introduction to Hamlin University, and we look forward to answering any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jen. And now we'll turn it over to Nathan at Virginia Wesleyan University. Nathan, I think you're muted. <laughs> All right, let's try again. Uh, thank you for introducing me and for telling me I was muted. Uh, my name is Nathan. I am a first year enrollment counselor here at Virginia Wesleyan University. Uh, we are Coastal Virginia's premier university of the liberal arts and sciences. So we're located at the crossroads of Norfolk and Virginia Beach in Southeast Virginia uh, in the middle of a city. So there are lots of opportunities off campus for internships, research and part-time jobs. We also have a 300 acre campus in the city itself, so you don't ever have to leave campus if you don't want to, but there are opportunities in the surrounding area. Uh, in terms of who we are as a student body, we're about 1600 students strong, so we are a small university. About a quarter of our students come from out of state, so the majority are from Virginia, but they are from all over as well. And the majority of our campus does live uh, here as residential students. If you are from the Hampton Roads area, then you can commute as a first year. Otherwise, you do have to live on campus as a first year. Uh, and you can live off campus in upper class years, but we do have a four year housing guarantee. So if you don't ever want to leave, then you'll always have a home here on campus. We have 39 majors, 31 minors, and a number of pre-professional programs. Uh, similar to the preceding universities where we are a liberal arts university. So we have an emphasis on a broad base of education while diving deep into your major. Uh, we do have small class sizes. So our average class size is about 14 students to one professor. So you really do get to know your professors, they get to know you and you get to build those relationships with them. To that end, we don't have any teaching assistants. So you will be learning directly from the experts. Batten Honors College is a selective portion of our university. You have to have a 3.5 or higher GPA to apply into the BHC. We are test optional for the fall of 2022, so you do not need a test score. Um, and then 40 students will be selected each year to be a part of Batten Honors College. 20 students will receive full tuition scholarships. 20 of them will receive two thirds tuition scholarship. There is an extra application in addition to our general app. Uh, which does include an essay, letters of recommendation, and a resume. There's also a competition process, so if you do have more questions, I'm happy to answer them uh, in the Q&A. The Lighthouse is an office here on campus. It's my favorite one. My last name is Lightman, so there's a little bit of a personal bias there, um, but it's where you're going to go to find the outside of class experiential learning opportunities. So if you want to do any sort of internships, you can go check with them see if they have any partnerships uh, with local companies that look interesting. Or if you have your own, you can bring it to them. They can work on resume writing and interview skills with you. If you wanna do any sort of research, then you can go to the Lighthouse and they can help you apply for grants for funding. And if you want to do any sort of off-campus study, we call it study away instead of study abroad because there are both domestic and international opportunities to study off-campus. We are a division three athletic school, which means that we do not offer athletic scholarships. Uh, our students come here because they wanna be student athletes. They love the game and have a passion, but at the same time, they wanna be able to focus on their studies. We have 22 teams, men's and women's. Uh, and if you don't wanna do varsity intercollegiate athletics, we also have intramurals here on campus. So you can get involved with some recreational physical activity. Sand volleyball and flag football are some of our more popular ones. For a small school, we do have a number of campus traditions. On the left here, you're gonna see mud games. This is probably our most popular one. The university will bring in mud and there are a number of competitive activities that take place. Uh, there's a trophy for the first place and then faculty and staff get involved as well. So it's a lot of fun and really brings everybody 
uh, together. On the right, you're going to see the holiday tree lighting that happens every year in December, and everybody comes together, you separate it out into groups, sing the 12 days of Christmas, and it's a lot of fun. And again, you know, the point is to bring the campus community together in the spirit of the holidays. We have about 50 clubs on campus uh, right now. That number fluctuates. So if there's something on campus you want to get involved in, you can start it with yourself and friends. And we do have Greek life, about 15 to 20% of our campus is involved. So if you want to do that, you can. And if you don't, then there are other social opportunities. For a small private school, we are affordable. Uh, our sticker price tuition is about $36,000 but every student receives some form of merit scholarship. This is going to be based on your high school GPA. And if you have any standardized test scores, we can use those, but we are test optional. So you don't need to have them. We offer a thousand dollar visit grant for coming to campus. And if you fill out the FAFSA, regardless of any need based financial aid that you receive, you'll also get a thousand dollar grant. If you are from the state of Virginia, then you're eligible for the Virginia tuition assistance grant. Uh, and that's about $4,000 for this upcoming year. In terms of application process, it is pretty easy. You do have to go to our website. We are not on the Common App, although our application is free. And then all that we will need from you is your official transcript. And if you have standardized test scores, we can use those as well. We are rolling admission. So as soon as you get us those application materials, we can get you a decision within a week or so. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask or give us an email. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nathan. And now we'll turn it over to Sheldon at California Lutheran University. Hello, everyone. My name is Sheldon. I'm one of the admission counselors here at California Lutheran University. Uh, we are located in Thousand Oaks, California, um, in Southern California, right outside the Los Angeles area. Now, Kelly Penn by numbers, we are a small private liberal arts university, about 2,800 undergraduates. So we like to keep things really small with an average class size of about 18 students with a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. Although Lutheran is our middle name, our students come from 41 different faith and non-faith backgrounds, so all are welcome. Uh, we are a fairly diverse institution with about 28% of our students um, being the first in their family to go to college our first-gen students, and about 58% of our students come from underrepresented backgrounds. So diversity is something that we really care about, and uh, we put the forefront um, of our identity. We're also a Hispanic-serving institution, meaning um, we um, set um, our enrollment goals with that of the federal government. So we do have support systems available for students who are interested in STEM, as well as um, the teaching pathway. Um, although we are in California, we have students coming from 36 different states and 58 countries. So you'll definitely have perspectives all over the world um, in your classrooms and all of that. Uh, we are about 25 minutes away from the ocean. Malibu is our closest beach. Um, so you'll definitely have a little bit of everything, the mountains, the ocean, some foresty areas as well. Um, but overall, 97% of our students either get a full-time job in their field or go on to grad school within nine months. So our students are very well prepared for life after Kelly Thrin. In terms of our experiential learning models, this is where we are allowing our students to take what they're learning in the classroom and applying them to real world situations. The way we do that is through study abroad, internships and research. So our study abroad office has sent our students over 80 different countries. The list does change every single year. Um, so um, you know, you'll be able to broaden your horizons definitely there. Um, what's great about our study abroad program is that it's all faculty led. Um, by Cal Lutheran faculty. So all of your classes will transfer over back to Cal Lutheran. Also all uh, scholarships and financial aid that you receive at Cal Lutheran will transfer over to your study abroad opportunity. Um, in addition to our traditional semester abroad, we also partner with Semester at Sea. And we also have um, two week travel seminars where students are able to travel for two weeks at a time to uh, minimize the commitment of studying abroad as well. We also have flexible domestic uh, trips as well. Um, we are excited to announce that study abroad will begin again uh, this upcoming spring. So we're excited to have our students um, continue uh, their study abroad journeys um, very soon. Last year, over 500 students have done some type of internship. Um, being in the Southern California area, our students are able to get really high level internships with um, the tech industry, entertainment industry, the music industry. Um, so our students are able to get those hands-on experiences. Our career services will help our students find their different opportunities, help them with their resume writing, their interview skills, 
Um, and also our career services are good for life. So once students graduate from Cal Lutheran, they can always come back uh, to get additional help, um, whether you're taking your career to the next level or if you um, want to change up your career as well. Although we are a liberal arts university, uh, research is a really big part of the Cal Lutheran experience. Uh, one of the biggest ways that, one of the biggest benefits of coming to a small school is that uh, you won't have to compete um, for these different opportunities to do research. We have our own Office of Undergraduate Research to connect students with their different opportunities, whether embarking on their own research or partnering with a professor. Um, our students are able to do the research um, that they want to do in their chosen topic. Um, what's unique about Cal Lutheran too is that we do guarantee housing all four years. All of our res halls are suite style, so two bedrooms, a bathroom, and a common area, all shared by four people, so there are no communal bathrooms. All of our residence halls come with air conditioning, heating, Wi-Fi, cable, and free laundry, so everything is all included. We even provide free parking uh, for all of our students, which is very rare for the Southern California area. With all of our amenities, we are ranked 12th best in the state of California for residence halls. And we also have various dining options, including our All You Can Eat Almond Commons, The Habit, uh, which is a local California uh, fast food joint, um, the largest Starbucks in Ventura County, as well as Jamba Juice. In terms of the application, we are on the common application. Uh, to complete an application, we just require official transcripts and at least one letter of recommendation. We are test optional, so we don't require standardized testing for admission, scholarship, or financial aid. But if you would like to use that as part of our holistic review, we'll definitely use your test scores um, to help your application as well. Um, we do use a holistic review when it comes to your application. So we're not looking at just GPA test scores and saying yes or no. We're looking at, we're looking at your personal statements, letter of recommendations, and all of that to ensure that we're getting to know who you are as a student uh, before we make our final decision. Uh, we have two different deadlines at Cal Lutheran. Our November 1st deadline just recently passed, but we also have our, our regular decision deadline happening on January 1st. Um, if you've applied by November 1st, we'll get your decision out by January 15th. And uh, if you submit your application by January 1st, we'll get your decision out by April 1st. In terms of financial aid and scholarships, overall 97%, 98% of our students receive some kind of financial assistance from us. So we are very generous with our financial aid. We have our merit-based scholarships um, that are um, based on your academic profile coming into the application process. This will come in your decision letter, so you'll know right away how much we're offering in merit scholarships. We also have our full tuition presidential scholarship for students who apply by our November 1st deadline. Um, that is a competition with an interview as well as um, an essay. And we also have a very unique scholarship called the Public Price Promise if you're admitted to a University of California school as well as Cal Lutheran. Um, we do also offer financial aid through the FAFSA or the California Green Max application, whichever one your family is eligible for. But if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to our office and we'll be more than happy to answer any questions for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sheldon. And now we'll turn it over to Peyton at Linfield University. Great, thanks so much, Elizabeth. Hi, everyone. Nice to have you here this evening. My name is Peyton. I'm an admission counselor at Linfield University. We are located in a small town called McMinnville in the heart of Oregon wine country, just about an hour south from the city of Portland. Uh, Linfield, we're a small private liberal arts university like most of the schools here on the Zoom this evening. And McMinnville itself, the town we're located in, is really a cozy little college town of about 35,000 people. Plenty to do around us though. There's lots of great restaurants in town and shops to check out. We're surrounded by vineyards and great outdoor areas. Oregon is kind of known for the outdoors and nature. You can see how green it is in the photo there. So there's plenty to do off campus. And like I said, the city is not too far. So you can drive up to Portland, make that hour commute and go to a concert or to the mall or whatever it might be. In terms of our students here at Linfield, we currently have about 1400 undergraduate students on our campus. And we are pretty diverse for a campus of our size with about a third of our students identifying as students of color and a third being first generation students. 
We're all about those small class sizes. So average class right now is 14 students. And again, that means that you're really gonna get that personalized education here at Linfield. So you are making connections with your professors, getting your questions answered. Overall, you're just really well supported through your four years at Linfield. We're very much a tight-knit community. Everyone kind of knows everyone here. So no matter where you go, you'll be able to find someone who can help you out or lend you a hand with whatever you need. We currently offer over 50 different majors across all the different disciplines as a liberal arts institution. We have a College of Arts and Sciences, a School of Business, and a School of Nursing. Um, some of the most popular majors at Linfield currently are things like nursing, education. We have a program where students can actually graduate with their Oregon State teaching license psychology, exercise science, and then the business majors. Uh, we recently added programs in sport management and wine studies, kind of taking advantage of our location here in the Northwest, the home of Nike and the heart of the Lemon Valley. There's plenty around us in terms of internship opportunities in those areas. No matter what students are interested in though, they do come in undeclared and they have a full two years to make up their minds. So plenty of time to do some exploring and figure out what it is you really wanna do. Our School of Nursing is located on a separate campus up in the city of Portland. So the way our program is structured is that students spend their first two years in McMinnville, completing their prerequisite requirements in nursing, then they'll transfer up to Portland for their junior and senior year where they'll finish out their nursing coursework and their clinical hours in the hospital setting. We do guarantee students a seat on the Portland campus as long as they make it through those first two years with a 3.0 GPA and all of those prerequisite courses. Our general education requirements are called the Linfield curriculum. This is really the heart of the liberal arts for us. So this is where you'll get to do that exploration and take some courses across all the different fields of study. The great thing about these is they're really flexible and kind of designed to be a fun form of general education. So maybe you'll take a dinosaur philosophy class or a sports economics class. There's a lot of options here to fulfill these classes. And like many of the calls are the schools on the call tonight, we are all about experiential learning at Linfield and that experiential learning takes a variety of different forms. Many of our students are involved in hands on research projects with their faculty, not just in the sciences like the student you see on the slide, but also in things like theater, um, history, political science all over the board. And study abroad is also quite popular with our students. About 40% of our students will go abroad before they graduate. We offer semester, full year, and January term abroad options. If you're not familiar with January term, that is essentially our mini semester here at Linfield held over the four weeks of January between the fall and the spring semester. No matter which study abroad program you choose at Linfield, we will cover the cost of your first round trip airfare for that experience. And even though we are a small campus, we have a lively and vibrant student life. There are always things going on, um, plenty to get involved in too. So no matter what your interests are, you'll find a club or a group to join here on our campus. Some of our largest clubs include things like our Hawaii Club. That is a very large group on campus. We got a lot of students coming to Linfield from the Hawaiian Islands. Um, things like our eSports Club, our pre-nursing club, our climbing club. Outdoor Rec is huge on campus, so they'll organize excursions out to the Oregon coast or up to Mount Hood to go skiing, hiking, whatever it might be. We even have sororities and fraternities on our campus. So you'll definitely find your smaller community within the larger Linfield community once you're here on our campus. We're also a highly residential campus, so we really see value in living here on campus with all of your peers. For that reason, we have a three-year residential opportunity. Two years of that will be spent in residence halls, and we have 15 of those to choose from, so you'll be comfortable no matter where you end up. And then we actually have five on-campus apartment complexes for our upperclassmen. So at that point, once you're a junior, you'll have your own bedroom and a bit more of an independent living situation. We have one dining hall on campus, Dillon Dining Hall. It's all-you-can-eat buffet style. And then we also have a Starbucks right here on campus as part of the meal plan and the Wildcat Express, which is just a go-style dining option. We are Division Three for Athletics here at Linfield. Here are our 23 sports that we offer. And finally, we're a common application school. It's free to apply and we are test free this year. So we're not using SAT or ACT scores 
whatsoever for admission or financial aid. And lastly, speaking of financial aid, we are very affordable when it comes down to it. We offer an average total aid package of almost $40,000 per year to bring that direct cost down for our students. And that is all I have. So thanks so much for your time and have a great evening. Thank you so much, Peyton. And now we'll turn it over to Ellie from North Central College. Hello, my name is Ellie. I'm a freshman admission counselor here at North Central College, and we are located in Naperville, Illinois. So first we can get into who are we at North Central College. We are a community of learners. So we have about 3000 students on campus, about 2700 undergraduate students and about 300 graduate students. We have students represented from 28 different states and 40 different countries. So we have a wide variety of students that are coming onto our campus. And 40% of our campus is a first generation student. We have an awesome program on campus for first generation students that really allow people to get immersed into North Central College and the college experience where you are able to get prepared and have that support as a student. And there are also scholarships that go along with that too. So it's a really awesome mentoring program for students to be able to have on our campus. Our class sizes are small, which really allows a one-on-one -on -one connection for students to be able to have. So our average class size is 20 students. Um, and our classes cap at 35. So you would never have more than 35 students in a class across all of your classes. So that could be a gen ed class up to a very specific major course. You'll never have more than 35 students in a class with our student faculty ratio being 14 to one. So kind of a common theme is that you are really able to build those professor relationships where you are more than just a number in a classroom. It's a great way to be able to connect with other students in your classes but it's also a great starting point to be able to get to know professors and they kind of begin to act as a mentor for students where you can go to them and you can ask them questions about class and about an exam coming up, but you can go to them looking for questions about future jobs, going to grad school, internship opportunities, things like that. It really opens the doors to build as many connections as possible for students. 100% of our faculty have their terminal degree and no, none of our classes are taught by teaching assistants. So the professor that's listed on the class is the one that is going to be teaching that class. We are located in Naperville, Illinois. So we are about a 35 minute express train ride into the city. Um, we are just west of Chicago. So we, Naperville has over 148,000 residents. We are located in the historic district of Naperville right by downtown. We're within walking distance of over 150 different restaurants, shops and cafes all within downtown. So it's a really nice opportunity to go walk the river walk with friends. You can grab food downtown, you can go shopping. Um, there's lots of things that are gonna be happening downtown Naperville. We've also built up our connections with Naperville and the Chicagoland area in general. So as students begin to look for research opportunities, internships, jobs, they have opportunities around the area as well as going into Chicago too. We were also named number three in the best cities to live in America. And we have tons of different areas to be able to walk where you can kind of hang out downtown. And like I said, we're located super close to Chicago as well too. So we're a 35 minute express train ride into the city where you are able to go there for fun if you want to for friends. But once again, you're able to find internships, research opportunities, and jobs located really close to Chicago too, where you can walk to the train station. You don't have to worry about driving into the city or parking at the train station. Just makes it that much easier to be able to have access to a bunch of different things from our campus. There is tons of different opportunities for involvement. We have over 70 different clubs and organizations on campus for students to really get involved in things that students are interested in. So we have a brand new eSports lab, if that's something that interests students. We have our radio station that was named the best radio station in the country in 2015. We have rec sports, which students can get involved in. Tons of different activities that way, as well as we have a club on campus called Enactus, which works all the way with the coffee bean farmers in Guatemala. Up to now with our brand new coffee lab, they, students will handle the roasting, grinding, and packaging processes 
all within there. So they really are able to get hands-on experience. Um, you can get involved in tons of different leadership roles or things within your major as well too, to expand your knowledge beyond just the classroom. Going beyond just professor relationships, you are able to get to know staff and faculty on campus to really make North Central College home. You are going to see familiar faces and have that support from a ton of different people. So for example, that first picture, Julie Carballo is the director of our first generation program, like I was talking about before. And she is an awesome tool for students to be able to have to go to about any questions they may have and how to get involved on campus, anything like that you're really able to get to know different staff and faculty on campus that allow you to have tons of different mentors throughout your time on campus here. So as you begin looking for jobs or internships, you have that access. And we have tons of different research opportunities on campus as well too, where you can get partnered with a professor or faculty member and really do hands-on research that way as well too. You can see we have over 70 different majors so there's always something for you to be able to major in or minor as well too. Here's just a few of them. In terms of our application process, you can apply three different ways. We do are on the Common App as well as we do have an online application as well too. That's very quick and easy to fill out. It takes about 10 minutes. We are test optional, which means we do not require an SAT or an ACT score. You can submit that if you want, but if you have not taken them either tests or you do not wanna submit them, that will not, you will not be penalized in any way. Um, and then we do offer merit scholarships for students as well too, that range from 20,000 to $27,000. From there, of course, we encourage you to fill out the FAFSA, of course, that is always beneficial. Um, then you would submit deposits. And here is some more information if you have any further questions at all. Thank you so much, Ellie. And I think we have time for a question for the panelists. Um, so I'll go ahead and share my screen here. And if you'd like to answer briefly, we have about four minutes left in tonight's session. So if you wanted to just give a short tidbit, what's one thing you want students to remember most about your school? And we'll start with Amanda from Chatham. Absolutely. Um, so I think, again, we have over 40 different majors, but one of the core values of Chatham is our commitment to sustainability. So whether it's uh, takeout containers, reusable takeout containers, all the way through to not having water bottles, uh, plastic water bottles on campus, we are deeply committed to sustainability and environmentalism, both in terms of study, as well as um, an overarching value of the institution. Well, add from Hamlin is um, our focus on experiential learning. So our faculty often talk about how they want their students to become practitioners in their field. And so making the connection for or helping students make the connection between what they learn in the classroom and a real life experience is something that all of our students will do at some point before they graduate. Uh, from Virginia Wesleyan University, it would be community. You know, people come here and really want to be a part of things, not just do four years and leave with a degree. They want to be a part of the surrounding community outside of EWU, as well as get to know each and every single person that's on campus here. And that's the benefit of a small university is that you can do that. Here at Kelly Brin, our, um, our location is our greatest asset. We're right outside the Los Angeles uh, metropolitan area. so. Perfect weather, 300 days of sunshine throughout the year, um, and really great um, experiential learning opportunities, especially for those who are interested in the entertainment industry or the music industry, um, or just want to explore in the area um, while you're in college. Here at Linfield, our mascot is the Wildcats, and we chose the Wildcats because we're a small school with a lot of scratch. So you get kind of all the perks of being a small university, those small class sizes and connections, but with that bigger school spirit and excitement. Um, at North Central College, you really are able to have the support. So from professors, staff, faculty, from our writing center, tutoring help, there's access for students to be able to have tons of different resources on campus. 
Thank you so much. This has been an amazing panel tonight um, with all of your input and sharing information about your institutions. And thank you to the attendees for joining us. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a link for a very quick five question survey and we'd appreciate your feedback. Um, this is the final session of this program tonight, but if you'd like to view any of the recordings from this program, you can do so at strivescan.com backslash NACU. And thank you so much. I hope you all have a wonderful day or evening.